What's going on dudes? Sean here, Hammerhead Garage. Got a little video I put together here for you. Um, today's topic is going to be Kawasaki Brute Forces. I've got a 2008 model 750 Brute Force in my shop here. Um, that's got problems. Uh, the customer states that um, the belt light was on and uh, it has no power. Um, so when the belt light goes on on these machines, it's, it, it goes in what's called LIMP mode, L-I-M-P mode. What that is, is it's a factory designation that the computer assigns to the machine because there's a problem. It thinks it's broke, which, which it may or may not be. It comes on automatically every hundred hours or so. Um, with the Kawasaki's, a lot of the other manufacturers are the same way. So anyway, I took the belt cover off and I had a look at it and um, I determined that there's nothing wrong with the belt. So I reset the factory belt light. There's a procedure to reset the light. You guys want to know what that procedure is, just get a hold of me and I'll let you know. So I reset the light, uh, took it out for a little run, it didn't fix the problem. The problem's still there. It's okay until you give it you get past half throttle and you give it the beans and all of a sudden it'll backfire and it'll surge and it'll fall on its face has no power and these things brand new will lift the front wheels off the ground if they're working right so there's an issue so I want to explain to you guys how to go about um, what what do you do when you get to that point if you've already reset the belt light and it still doesn't work those of you who know me know that I'm factory Kawasaki trained uh, I've been to five different Kawasaki service schools and have the, have the uh, certificates. Uh, I worked on a lot of brute forces, 650, 750 brutes. 2008, I rebuilt 26 brute force engines, 650s and 750s. 11 of those were crank up rebuilds and the rest of them were top ends. So what I'm going to uh, show you guys how to do is what you would do to test the fuel system. Um, I get a suspicion based on the knowledge I have from working on these things that there's a problem with the fuel pump. So there's a procedure called a fuel flow test. And I'll explain to you guys what that is and then we'll do it and see what, what the results are. Now basically what the fuel flow test is, is you take off this line. This is from the fuel pump and it goes onto the manifold. I don't think you can even see it in there. I'll see if I can shine the camera in. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. Anyway, in here, there's the line for the throttle body. That's where this fuel line hooks up. And then there's a red, red clip that secures it to the manifold tube. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to find this. You have to take the side cover off. You can't access anything on this thing without the side cover off. Take the fuel line off until you get it like this. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get yourself a glass beaker or something that will measure cc's. Okay, you're going to want to measure cc's. And milliliters and cc's are the same thing. So you want something that will measure cc's. So what you'll do is you'll take a little beaker. Basically, it's just a Pyrex uh, measuring cup. Um, just let me see if I can do it in such a way that you can see what I'm doing here, guys. Bear with me, dudes. Having these, this camera problem that I always have, as you guys know all about it, I'm sure. Anyway, I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. You basically take the Pyrex you stick your fuel line in there and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cycle the key three times when you turn the key on on these brute forces it'll prime for three seconds each time you prime it for three seconds you should have 50 cc's of fuel so you want to do it three times so at, at the end of this I should have 150 cc's in this measuring jug if I don't there's a problem so here's the first one You let it do its little cycle and all that stuff. Then here's number two. Okay. And now here's number three. Okay. 
Now if you guys look at this, I hope you can see this, we got about 75 cc's of fuel in this jug from three prime cycles. I should have 150 at least. And that's the minimum number you should have, not the maximum. So we got a problem with the fuel pump here. I don't know for sure what the problem is. It's likely gone, gone out. It's very common for the 2008 models to have a bad fuel pump. It happens quite often. Um, it's the fuel injected ones seem to be affected more than the carbureted ones. In order to remove the fuel pump, you have to take basically the whole ass end of the quad off. The bodywork, seat, everything, all it all has to come off. Then there's an electrical tray in here. You have to unplug all the, all this stuff has to be unplugged. You have to pull it all off and then that electrical tray has to come up and off. And then underneath that is the fuel pump. It's down on the, this is the gas tank. It's down right over here. You have to pull the fuel pump out. And then uh, don't bother going to the dealership and buying a brand new Kawasaki fuel pump. They're going to charge you $700 Canadian for the pleasure. I'll, show, I'll tell you a little trick what works. Go to Rock Auto, order a Jeep Wrangler fuel pump from a 1993 four-cylinder engine. It's the same thing essentially, guys. And it's $25 to $35 for that versus $700. The fuel pumps are plastic, but you can take them apart. When I do this one, I'll pull the pump apart. I'll show you guys what's involved in taking it apart and putting it back together. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. I hope this helps somebody diagnose your uh, problem with your ATV. Um, anyway, yeah, look outside, guys. This is May the 10th. We got 10 centimeters of snow last night, if you can believe that. Oh, jeez, man, I'm so tired of winter. I just want to ride my motorcycle and drive my hot rod and be free, man. You know what I'm saying? You guys, you guys feel me. I'm sure you do. Anyway. Thumbs up for war amps, stay classy.